second section. So foundations of math 20, uh, we're looking at optimization problems. I did mention optimization um, a couple days ago uh, in a lesson, maybe last lesson, maybe the lesson before. But in calculus, for those of you that may be taking calculus, we will be spending a, a big portion of you know, uh, that class on thinking about optimizing different situations or optimization problems. In this type of math, we're going to be using inequalities and constraint uh, inequalities and feasible regions and possible solutions that fit all of the parameters of the question. We're going to be doing it without using calculus, but there's a way to do it with um, you know, basic uh, algebra and, and graphing techniques. So optimizing means that we want to either maximize something or minimize something. So when we think about different problems, we might want to maximize. So in a real life situation, why don't you think about this for a second? Tell me. What kind of things in real life situations might we want to maximize? Maximize what? In a real life situation, we might want to maximize? Money. Okay, money. So what you mean by that is money that you make, right? Like revenue, okay? You don't want to maximize the money that something costs, necessarily. You might want to minimize costs and maximize revenue. Okay, that's good. Anything else that you might want to maximize or minimize in life? The which, sorry? Okay, minimize usage of fuel in your vehicle or something. Absolutely. So you want to minimize that, sure. And there are different um, the ways that we could you know, write certain equations or inequalities here to form some constraints uh, on that sort of thing. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking at. Um, if you read through the text here, um, there's some different ideas on, uh, you know, what we could maximize, what we could minimize. Um, so on page two, or 324, sorry, uh, there's a couple examples here. There's one about a car, um, a toy, toy car company here making two different kinds of cars. Over here on the left, here's a florist that's ordering uh, different you know, kinds of uh, flowers and different things for their arrangements. And so if we look at either one of these, let's take a look at this one, just to think about what kind of question we might be answering. A florist is ordering uh, bracken fern, fern and baby's breath for bouquets and centerpieces. So that's what the question's about. No more than 100 stems of baby breaths will be ordered. So there's a constraint of the problem. There's a limit, right? More than 100 stems of bracken fern will need to be ordered. So there's another constraint that we need to consider. The florist has space to store more than, no more than 250 stems in total. And then um, the questions around that could be, you know, is each of the following combination, or is each of the following a combination that she can order and explain? So in this question right here, we're given a, a long word problem with some criteria, right? And then we're given some examples of uh, different combinations and we're asked, can those combinations, do they meet that criteria set out in the question? So one of the ways you could do it is you could just go one combination at a time and see if they fit all the criteria in the question. But that's sort of like trial and error. Like when we, you know, in math class, if you, um, you know, sometimes there's, a, there's an efficient a way to get to an answer is sometimes, you know, if you can't remember the method, you just use trial and error, and sometimes it can take a long time just to go through all the possible solutions. So what we want to do is we want to set up a system of inequalities in order to find out where this feasible region is, just like we talked about the other day. And, um, and then we can narrow down or determine which combinations might be possible and which wouldn't. So why don't we just take a look at some definitions here. Um, so I've talked about these, some of these already. So why don't we take a moment to, in your notes, uh, just go ahead and either copy this down word for word or just summarize it. The things we want to take a look at specifically are optimization problem. I explained what that was. And constraint is the other word that I mentioned there. It's a limiting condition of the optimization problem. So the other thing we need to understand what, the, what this means is the objective function, okay? So in an optimization problem, the equation that represents the relationship between the two variables 
in the system of linear inequalities and the quantity to be optimized is the objective, objective function. So we're going to go back and take a look at this specific example here in a minute. Um, but what we're trying to do is come up with some kind of equation that we're trying to maximize. So you mentioned earlier, you know, you, sometimes you might want to maximize revenue. You might want to minimize cost or minimize the amount of fuel used or something. So the total number of vehicles here, okay, we're trying to optimize the total number of vehicles. And in this question, in this question, which is up here, the school wants to know the combination of cars and minivans that will require the minimum and the maximum number of vehicles. So if we're going on a school trip here, which looks like this, this um, question is talking about, they want to find a minimum number of vehicles that can take everybody. Um, and they also want to, you know, maybe uh, the other thing they, they want to know is what are the maximum number of vehicles, which usually it's just one or the other, not both. So a minimum might be appropriate for this question, right? You have all these people that want to go and what's the, um, the fewest number of vehicles that you can take. So that would be uh, something. So that would represent uh, all of the different types of vehicles, um, you know, the objective function. So the last thing that we'll just kind of talk about as far as the definition goes, and I've mentioned this and explained this actually before, <coughs> is the feasible region. So the feasible region is the solution region, right? It's the area of the graph that would represent combinations that fit the, uh, the solution to the problem. So the solution region for a system of linear equalities that is modeling an optimization problem. So if you look at this uh, graph right here, it appears that we have uh, you know, a region for one of the inequalities over here, um, another one down here, this line on the angle here looks like we're, we're shading this part. So the region that overlaps for all of these constraints would be this area right here. That's the feasible region. Okay? That would be the feasible region for this, this question. Okay? So now that we've got those terms, let's go back and take a look at this um, exact problem here to see if we can get a, get a handle, get a feel for what we're actually going to be having to do in this section. So, example one, let's work through this one. <clears throat> Creating a model for an optimization problem with whole number variables. Okay, so three teams are traveling to a basketball tournament in cars and minivans, okay? Cars, minivans. Each team has no more than two coaches and 14 athletes, each team, and there's three teams. Each car can, make, can take four team members and each minivan can take six team members. No more than four minivans and 12 cars are available. Okay, so the school wants to know the combination of cars and minivans that will require the minimum and maximum number of vehicles. Create a model to represent this situation. So this is the type of, of question that you'll get, something that you want to maximize or minimize, in this case both, we're just going to explore both. And you'll have a number of criteria or constraints. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to generate um, inequalities that match the information in the question. So let's take a look at uh, one of the solutions here. This is the one they give in the textbook. So they're going to let M represent minivans and C represent cars. Okay? You remember I said yesterday, X and Y, not always the best to use if you had a word problem or an actual situational problem. Might be a good idea to let the variables be a little more logical representing the quantities that they represent. So M for minivan, C for cars. Okay? Seeing as there's no possible way you can take a fraction of a vehicle on a trip, you have to take a, either a whole vehicle or not a vehicle at all. So we have to understand that our, um, our domain and range right, are, are consisting only of whole numbers here. Okay? So you can't have an answer of 5.6 you know, cars and 7.8 minivans. It doesn't work. Okay, so the constraints. All right, so if we take a look at the constraints, the number of cars that are available. Now, it's said in the question that uh, there's no more than 12 cars are available. So C, the number of cars, are going to be less than or equal to 12. Everyone see that? That's one of the first constraints. That's an easy one to identify there. The number of minivans. So the minivans, there's only a maximum of four minivans that are available. So if we have our two variables, 
lots of times we have two constraints just regarding those variables alone. Okay? Or maybe it's a sum of them, right? But so we know those two. So those are two inequalities we're going to graph. And then the number of team members, okay? This one can be a little bit tricky, but you know, what what's another constraint that we have? Um, it says that there are um, three teams of two coaches and 14 athletes, okay? So, so that's three times 16 people is where this 48 comes from. So the number of uh, people in total is 48, and each car can take four. So we don't know how many cars we're actually going to take yet, so it's going to be four times the number of cars, plus each minivan can take six. So here is... Um, Here's our third constraint here. Okay, everyone see that? Okay, so those are the constraints that th th those represent the inequalities that are going to be graphed, and then the objective function that we talked about is not going to be necessarily on the graph. Okay, it's not necessarily going to be on the graph. This is just sort of at the end of it. Once we find our possible solutions we plug the possible solutions into this objective function. You see, it's objective, meaning that it's sort of outside of all of the inequalities, let's say outside of the problem a little bit. It's like, okay, here are the, possible, the possibilities that fit all the criteria, and then we'll take those combinations, and then we'll plug it into a separate objective function, uh, and then we'll find our answers there, okay? So the objective function is, uh, you know, an equation. Um, I don't know if it's always an equation. I guess it's going to be always an equation. Okay, so that's why it's not going to be on here. So, saving some time here, um, I won't make you graph it, but we'll take a look at the graph that's already in the textbook there. And the graph would be titled "Numbers of Cars and Minivans." The cars would be on one axis, minivans on the other. Right. So we've got M here and C there. We graph our inequalities. M is less than or equal to four. So here's the M equals 4 line right here and then everything less than so this is the shaded region cars up to and including 12 so we have that line C equals 12 or Y equals 12 the horizontal line and then you shade everything underneath there and then this one right here is going to be an oblique uh, line here a slanted line so think about this as you know 4 Y plus 6 X right and you just graph it accordingly you can use a table of values. You can isolate for C if you want to get Y equals MX plus B form. But anyways, you've got to make this line right here. And then once all of those feasible regions, or once all of those regions overlap, you identify the feasible regions. And these points right here represent possible solutions. So number of minivans could be one. Number of cars could be six. See this point right here is one and six. Right? So what's the fewest number of vehicles um, that we could take, and what's the maximum number of vehicles we could take? Okay, so what I'm going to do, just to finish this off, I'm going to clip this into the notes, and I'm just going to show you how this objective function would work at the end there. Okay. So let's put it over here. So the objective function, we said, was V equals C plus M, right? So um, let's pick up some points here. So obviously we could take zero of each. <laughs> Would that work? Um, that's not going to be much of a trip. Um, is this right here included? This point right here? Is that included in all in this feasible region? Yeah, it's all or equal to. See that? So the ones that are on these border lines would be equal or would be acceptable. So we could have zero minivans and we could have 12 cars. That would take everyone, right? So for one of the, uh, one of the solutions is we could take you know, 12 vehicles, okay? Let's test some other ones. What about this one right here? This is two and six, you see that? So we could have an objective function of two plus six is eight, okay? So are you guys kind of seeing how this, how this is working? All right. What about this one right here? That's four and six, right? So we've got um, four and six is 10. Okay, so it looks like 
Uh, 12 is the maximum number of vehicles. Why don't you take a minute here and look through all these options right here on the, on the board and find out what the minimum number of vehicles we could take that satisfies uh, everything that we need to. So, so what's the minimum number of vehicles? I may have it on the board here. Uh, it may be representing some other combination. So go ahead and take a minute to take a look at that. Okay, so we're looking at some other options. Um, we looked at what happens if we did uh, uh, six and two. We looked at this point right here. And so if we had two minivans, that would be 12 people. And if we had six cars, that would be another 24. So we'd have 36 people. That's not enough to take everybody. So that point is actually going to be not working here. Four and two. So you said four minivans and two cars. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Four minivans. Is that what, is that what you said? Four minivans and two cars? So four minivans would be six people times four, and two cars would be um, two people. Sorry, two cars times four. Four times two and six times four. Okay, so that's going to be that's going to be eight and twenty-four. So that's not quite going to be enough uh, people either. So, okay, so that's okay. So what about this point and this point? Um, do these, do either one of those give us a solution we're looking for? If we take 12 cars, right? That's 12 times four, that's 48 people. What about this one? Four and six, does that add up to uh, 48 people? Four times six and six times four? That's 48. So I guess my point is, is that these two points here in the corners are going to give us our maximum and minimum number of vehicles. Okay, the ones on the points, or on the corners. And that's going to be something that as we move forward here in the next couple sections, the corners uh, of the feasible region are going to be super important. So you want to kind of focus on those. So a combination of zero minivans and 12 cars would give us 12 vehicles. And that would be our maximum number of vehicles right here. Okay? And four minivans and uh, six cars. Okay? That's going to be 10 vehicles. That's going to be our, our, our fewest. Does that look right? Because eight doesn't transfer, uh, transport enough people. Does that look? You guys understand that? Okay? So you got to make sure that your solutions that you're going to come up with fit everything, including the objective function. And again, a hint is the uh, corners of those feasible regions are going to be one uh, combinations that you're going to want to pay close attention to. Okay. Okay. Just take a moment to look at the key ideas and the need to know here in your textbook. Suggested assignment. There's number one. 